this function root x plus 3 and 1 over x, we'd like to be able to find f of g of x. So when you see the x in f, you replace it with g. That's it. We can simplify this, though. In fact, um, it's, it's necessary for later steps. Let's combine, think about this as 3 over 1, and have the common denominator of x, and then multiply top and bottom by x. So we have 1 over x plus 3x over x. All this is underneath a root. And we'll write it as 1 plus 3x all over x. That's our function for f of g of x. Other way around, actually, no, let's, let's do it all the way through. Um, later, they ask for its domain. What's underneath the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. One plus three x all over x must be greater than or equal to zero. Now you have a fraction. When is a fraction positive? It's positive when the top, the numerator and denominator are the same sign. So let's look at the numerator. 1 plus 3x. When is it 0? It's 0 when x is negative 1 third. When is it positive? When is it negative? You plug in something smaller the negative one third and you'll be negative. You plug in something bigger the negative one third and it'll be positive. So that's the sign analysis on that part. Now we need the sign analysis on the denominator. Much easier, it's just x. And so at zero and zero, negative on the left and positive on the right. Okay, I like for this to be positive, and so they're both going to be positive, or they're both going to be negative. So I answer the question that we're going to have negative infinity up to negative one third. You cannot include negative infinity, but it, if you did have negative one third, the function would be zero. And that's okay to take the square root of zero. The other part, you cannot include zero. That looks too much like a square bracket. Let me. You cannot include zero because you'd have division by zero. And then will go off to infinity. And these two get combined with the union symbol. Now the range is a much more difficult question. It's not a question that we normally ask. In fact, you really shouldn't spend too much time on it. If you have been spending time and time on this question, then uh, it's not the smartest thing to do. I want you to spend more time on other questions. And so this is some small, minor, you know, one part of one point and in the big scheme of things, you have, you have bigger things to worry about. But let me tell you how to find it. It, it comes in us trying to figure out what happens. We have these values of x that we can use. We know we can't use the guys in between. But we have to think about what happens to this function as I go off towards negative infinity. What happens to this function as I go off towards infinity? 
what happened to this function as I approach negative one-third, what happened to this function as I approach zero? I actually need to get some kind of idea to find out what the y values are. Okay. Let's go back to the original version of the function. 1 over x plus 3. Okay. Now, x is going to get very, let's do it from this side. x is going to get very big. Let's think about it as x gets very big. Well, what does 1 over x do? If I have 1 over something that's very, very big, it's going to get very, very small. And the bigger it gets, the smaller it gets. It's going to go to 0. And so this function, call it, um, let me just call it y, is if the 1 over x part is going towards 0, then the function is going to be 0 plus 3 underneath the root. It's going to be the root of 3. Okay. And same thing is going to happen at, as negative infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity, same thing. If I put a negative 1 million underneath a 1, it's still going to go to 0. It's just going to go to 0 from the other side. And then your function will still be going towards uh, root 3. All right, so... We have this idea that the function goes towards root 3. Let's just, um, what that is, we'll learn later. But um, x gets big, the function goes towards root 3. x gets small, the function goes towards root 3. Okay. And, um, and so we're going to try to get an idea what the graph is so that we could... Uh, so that we could uh, figure out what the range is. All right, that dashed line is a we're going to later call it asymptote. Um, so um, y goes towards root three here. Y goes towards root three here. What happens as you go towards negative one-third. Well, actually, we said that the if, if x is negative one-third, then the function is, uh, is zero. Um, x equals negative one-third. We can go ahead and plug it in. We don't have to worry about what's happening as we go there. We can get there. If x equals negative one-third, then what happens with y is that it's going to be 0. So we could just say y equals 0 there. In fact, we can go ahead and graph it, negative 1 third, and we know that the function is exactly 0 there. Okay, so between here and here, you're at 0 on the right-hand side, and you're going to go towards root 3 as it gets big. Basically, it's going to do something like this. Never quite get to root 3, but it's going to go towards that. Okay? We know in between, we have this void. In between, we don't have anything. So the last thing to consider is, well, what's going to happen as we go towards 0? As x goes towards 0, to figure out what y does. And we have to go back to the as part. As x as x goes towards zero. The question is what does y do? Sorry about that. Think about the function. What does one over x does? Oh, oh what does one over x do? Sorry about that. <laughs> One over x does the following. X is getting small, like like a fraction, you know, one over a billion. In turn, the whole thing is going to get very big. 
and so it's going to go to infinity. The y values are going to get very large. And so that helps out a lot. It's a shame we have to go through all this work for one part of one point, but that's what it is. Let's go back to our graph. As I go towards zero, I'm going to go off to infinity. It must do something like this. And then come down and look like that. If that's the case, let's answer the question about the range. It's a shame we had to go through all that, but anyway, what is the range? The range is, wait, let me, uh, this is our answer to the domain. And then, um, now we're about to answer the range. And the way we answer is by looking at the graph. What are the possible y values? I get all of these y values. And then I get all of these y values. I just don't get this y value. I didn't mark it off. It's, it's the root of 3. And so, here's how you report your answer. Your answer is then the y values. You go from 0 up to the root of 3. You can equal 0. You can get a y value of 0. You cannot get a y value of root 3. And then you go from the root of 3 to infinity. And a union in between. And these are parentheses here. This guy's a square bracket, though. And um, that will be your answer to the range. But like I said, it's a small part of the big picture. Spend more time on the rest of it. This is, uh, this is not it's not meant for you to spend a lot of time on. Okay, great. This was uh, question number 12, I believe. This is uh, homework one, question 12. Hand in homework, I mean, um, online homework number one, question number 12.